Petrosim is a graphical user interface for the Tough 2 suite of simulators developed at the Lawrence Berkeley National Lab in Berkeley, California. One of the main benefits of using Petrosim with Tough 2 is the ability to create conceptual models that include high-level objects such as layers and wells that are independent of the grid. In the following examples, we'll demonstrate the use of internal boundaries and conceptual model layers to represent geological formation boundaries. During the creation of a new model, the user specifies the simulator, equation of state module, and extents of the model. In this example, we'll use tab-delimited text files containing XYZ data to create internal boundaries representing geological formation boundaries. These text files were created using the RockWorks 15 subsurface modeling program developed by Rockware. The Krieging algorithm was used in RockWorks to create gridded surfaces based on stratigraphic elevation information stored in the Borehole Manager database. The grid files created in RockWorks were exported as text files that were imported into Petrosim as internal boundaries. The internal boundaries fall within a single conceptual model layer that can be selected in the data tree displayed to the left of the 3D model. The internal boundaries have divided this single layer up into five regions that are graphically highlighted as the regions are selected with the mouse in the data tree. By right-clicking on a region and selecting Properties, the user can change the region name, material, and status. Model initial conditions can also be assigned by region. Here, we'll change the region names based on material type and we'll disable cell regions above the top internal boundary and below the bottom one. In this example, each region is displayed based on the material type assigned to that region. Note that as I click on a region in the 3D model, it is highlighted in the data tree to the left. Next, we'll add a well to the model by right-clicking on the well group in the data tree and selecting Add Well. Wells can be linear or curvilinear in Petrosim. Well geometry is entered into the program as a list of XYZ values along the well trace. Once the well object is created, the user can modify the completion interval and add injection or production information. In Petrosim, wells are used to represent model sinks and sources and can also be used as mesh refinement points. As you can see here, the completion interval for the well is displayed with a thick red line. Before creating the mesh, we need to define the number of cell layers in the single conceptual model layer. In this case, the program will divide this layer into 30 evenly spaced horizontal cell layers. To create a mesh, go to Model, Create Mesh. In the resulting window, choose the mesh type and mesh spacing. In this example, the program will divide the model into 35 evenly spaced cells in the X direction and 40 evenly spaced cells in the Y direction. In Petrosim, we refer to this type of mesh as a rectangular mesh. As you can see in the resulting mesh display, each cell is assigned to a region based on the location of the center of the cell. Attributes assigned to each region, such as material type and initial conditions, are assigned to the cells within the region. Cells within the disabled regions are disabled and not displayed. These disabled cells will not be included in the Tough 2 mesh created by Petrosim. Rectangular meshes can be refined around features such as wells or heat sources by choosing the custom mesh option. When creating this type of mesh, which is very similar to when created by MeshMaker, the user populates a table that defines direction, the number of repeated cells, and the cell size. This information can be typed into the program or pasted from the Windows clipboard. As you can see here, the grid has now been updated to have a smaller cell spacing in the area surrounding the well, which should lead to a more accurate model. A polygonal mesh composed of Veronoi polygons can be created as well. 
When creating a polygonal mesh, the user enters the maximum area of the mesh elements adjacent to wells and at the boundaries of the model. This allows for the refinement of the mesh around wells or other areas where you might expect a high gradient. The benefit of refining a polygonal mesh rather than a rectangular grid around wells is that the refinement of polygonal meshes requires fewer model elements and results in shorter model runtimes. In the next example, we'll remove the internal boundaries from the model and use the gridded surfaces to represent the top and base of conceptual model layers. This is done through the layer manager, which is accessed through the data tree or the edit menu. The first step in this process is to specify top and base surfaces for the uppermost layer in the model. When creating the layer, I can also specify the number of cell layers to be included in the model layer. After defining the first layer, you can simply specify the lower surface for subsequent layers below the first layer. Each layer can be assigned a unique color, a material property, and initial flow and chemical conditions. Once the layers are created, they are displayed in the data tree to the left and can be accessed with a double click or through the Model Edit Layers menu item. Properties assigned during the layer creation can easily be modified through the layer editor. Once layers are defined, both rectangular and polygonal meshes can be created. In both cases, the thickness of the cell layers mimic the conceptual layer thicknesses. Thanks for watching. For more information about Petrosim, please visit the Rockware and Thunderhead Engineering web pages. For information about purchasing the Tuf2 source code, visit the Lawrence Berkeley Lab Earth Science Division's Tuf webpage.